Hey guys, my name's Ben Howard, and today we're out here at Flat Rock Middle School to get a sneak preview of the Goliath Disc's newest disc release, this one being the ARC. Um, the ARC is supposed to be a step up in speed and stability from the Enoch. The disc I hear these compared to the most is a Thunderbird, with, but with my experience, they're not quite as stable as a lot of Thunderbirds. Um, just to show you a side profile real quick. and I would say this yellow one's probably the closest one to a Thunderbird out of these two with it just being kind of straight with a little bit of finish, whereas this green one has a little bit of turn to it. Um, I did bring three discs to compare to these. Got a Star Thunderbird, which is going to be a little bit more stable than these, I assume, but we're going to find out today. And we've got a CD1 and a C-Line Plastic. This one, I'm assuming, is going to fly kind of in between the two, maybe. This one gives me a little bit of turn normally. And then I've got this uh, S-Line CD1, which I'm assuming is going to be a little bit more understable than both of these. But when it comes to first impressions, I'm really looking forward to trying these out. Feel very comfortable in the hand. Feel really nice forehand and backhand. So let's go and get into it. All right, guys, so we're on hole one. This one's a par three, 250 feet, just straight ahead. Going slightly downhill. And as you can tell, the ground slopes from right to left. So I'm going to try just a chip forehand with, I think, the Thunderbird and probably both of the uh, arcs just to get kind of warmed up. I'm going to count the yellow arc as my main play, though. Mm, it's a little too far right. That should be a, like an edge of circle putt, maybe. And I'll go with, uh, I guess this is blue. I don't know. What do you call it? Like teal, I guess? I don't know. We'll go with this one. There we go. It's much better. Get in the bucket. Ooh. It's parked, though. All right, and then for the Thunderbird. Ooh. Nose up. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> actually, a pretty good roll. <sighs> That's the one bad part about coming up here to play. Is it's always like five to ten degrees colder up here <sighs> than it is near the house. So, gonna have to deal with some grip issues today, but we still cash this putt. Ah, oh, slipped out of my hand. I'll answer the roll. All right, guys, we're on hole two. This is where we're going to play from the long tees. It's a par three, 500 feet, just straight ahead. Only thing to really pay attention to is get the road off the left as it's out of bounds. So for this hole, I'm going to go with the teal arc as my main shot, and then I want to compare that to the S-line uh, CD1 just to see how much more turn I get out of that one compared to this. Huh. Didn't really turn that much out of my hand. I'll oh, sit down. Ah, dang. It felt like I put that on a tiny bit of hyzer. So that's interesting. I was thinking it was going to be a little bit less stable than that. So let's compare that to the CD1. I definitely put that one on a little bit more hyzer, and you could definitely see. Very, very similar flight, though. Definitely a lot more similar. I'll, I'll have to look back at the footage and see if I did release that on any hyzer, though. If I did, it definitely wasn't near as much as I put on that CD1. So that's nice to see. The CD1's just a little bit more flippy. So something else I noticed once I got down here is the CD1 also went probably about 30 feet farther. And obviously this uh, arc faded out a little bit farther. So probably going to have to compare this one to the C-Line CD1 and then compare this one more to the Thunderbird, and I was thinking, let's get up and down. Oh, what? There we go. All right, guys, we're on hole three. This one's a par three, 320 feet. Basket's just dead straight ahead. Only thing to pay attention to is got OB off to the right, all along marked by the tall grass. So if I want to do any mistake, I want to be off to the left. 
Uh, the baseball field is in, out of bounds too, but shouldn't come into play, hopefully. But for this one, I'm going to take the yellow arc and compare it to the C-Line CD1. Just going to throw both of them off to, just a little bit off to the right side of the basket, try and give them a good amount of height, and see if I can just kind of get them to push straight for a long time and then gently fade out to the left. Uh, not as high as I meant for it to be, but I was sick. Heck yeah, I think I'm parked. Oh, really? But yeah, you can see there, it's a very similar flight. All right, guys, we're on hole four. This one's a par three, 280 feet. Baskets on the other side of this group of trees you can see right here in front of us. So pretty much you have to decide whether you want to throw a forehand hyzer or a backhand hyzer. I like the backhand hyzer more just because, as you can see, the ground slopes from left to right. So if you go with the forehand hyzer, it's easy to go too far right, whereas if you throw something out to the right, it obviously you're going to stick in the side of the hill and not really move too far. The only bad part about going off to the right is you have to have something that'll move farther from right to left than you would left to right going to the forehand route, but shouldn't be too bad. So I'm going to go with the yellow arc and the Thunderbird on this one. Uh, it flipped a little bit. Let's move that way. That's not bad. It's a little bit past pin high. I think there's a little bit of a headwind. I didn't think it was going to affect it that much, but I think it just kind of, you can kind of see it just kind of stood it up just a little bit and made it fly straight. So let's compare that to the Thunderbird. I got a little bit of flip out of that Thunderbird, but you can see yeah, it's that's a lot more stable than that arc. See if we can put this in. Ah, almost. All right, guys, we're on hole five. This one's a par three, 309 feet. Basket's just straight ahead, slightly downhill. On the other side of this bush you can see in front of us, biggest thing to pay attention to those, the uh, ditch between us and the basket is out of bounds. So if I hit in that tree or any of these trees out here and fall straight down, I'm going to be out of bounds. So I'm going to try not to do that. But I'm going to take both the arcs, and I want to throw them through four hands through this left gap. If they go straight, that's fine. I, biggest thing, though, is just got to make sure that I hit my line and try to hit the gap best I can. I'll go with the yellow one as my main play. Ooh, turned a little bit for me. Fall straight down. Oh, we're safe. Cool. Okay, that's good enough. They're not insanely forehand or uh, torque resistant, which I didn't feel like I got a clean release on that anyway. So, with well, this one, we give this one a little bit of hyzer so we can get a stand up. Oh yeah, there we go. Two cross. Ah, dang. Just need a little bit more height, but that's nice to see, though. Just need a little bit of a hyzer out of the hand, and it just kind of stood stood up and just went dead straight. So the teal one's actually safe, which is nice, but let's go ahead and get up now from the other one. Oh. Sit down. Okay. That's like another 25-footer. Oh, dang. All right, guys, we're on hole six. This one we're going to be playing from the long tee pad, just 270 feet. Basket's just straight ahead, way uphill. So this is going to be a good hole to see how these react to a little bit of nose-up angle, trying to throw them uphill. Biggest thing to pay attention to, though, is there's OB off to the left. So if I do want a mistake, I want to be off to the right. But... For this one, I'm going to try and throw these to the right side of this tree on the right side of the basket and see if I can put, get it to push past the, that tree and fade in behind them. If I can do that, that'd be nice. 
but for this one, I'm going to go with the teal one as my main shot, just because, I, like I said, I feel like I can get a little bit more flip out of it. It's probably going to hold a little bit straighter. So, let's see what we can do. Uh, not quite. Need a little higher and a little bit more to the right to get the shot I wanted, but well, not bad. Not bad at all. That's the yellow one. There it is. Much better. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Drop. Oh, dang. Almost. All right, guys. We're on hole seven. This one's a par three. 300 feet. Basket's up this way, tucked off to the right on the other side of this... Uh, group of stuff you can see right here in front of us so i'm gonna take both the arcs again just put them on some anheuser see if i can get them to hold the angle and just kind of pan out to the right i don't need a ton of left to right movement on this shot so the biggest thing i want to make sure i don't do is just turn these over and get them to cut roll down the hill or something like that um i'm gonna go with the yellow one as my main shot just because i trust it a little bit more to come out of that anheuser angle Oh, well, that's kind of what I wanted, but I'm like 60 feet long of the basket. And, so, okay, but probably about, I'm gonna give this one a little bit more ante and throw it a little bit closer to the basket, a little more to the right. I like that, yeah. Flatten out. There we go. That should be like, Maybe like 20 to 25 feet from the basket. <sighs> okay, so maybe not 60 feet long, but definitely outside a circle, probably close to 45, 50 feet. <sighs> Go ahead and ring it up. Fade, fade. Oh, dang. All right, guys, we're on hole eight. This one we're playing from the long tee pad, which is a par four, 600 feet basket. It's just dead straight ahead. You can kind of see it. No OB on this hole, but biggest danger is the rough off to the right is insanely thick. It's really easy to lose a disc in there, so don't want to go off in there. And as you can kind of tell, this hill off to the left makes a really interesting hole. Because if I fade out too far left, that hill is going to pinch off my angle into the basket. So I really just got to make sure I throw a nice straight shot. And the closer I am to that rough on the right, the better look I'm going to have to get up and down from there. So it's a very, very tough hole. Very fun hole, though. I trust the teal one to go a little bit straighter, so I'm going to throw that as my main shot. Pretty much just dead straight at the basket, maybe a little bit off to the right side of it. Not too far, though, because, like I said, don't want to go right. So just straight ahead. That's all we got to do. That's nice. I, sit down okay that's gonna be good we'll have good footing from there have pretty straight shot the basket that hill's gonna kind of be in the way but that shot shows you why this hole can be so difficult just just by being that like 10 to 15 feet left of where i want to be it's gonna that shot's gonna be a little bit tougher but all right let's see what we can do with the yellow one That's much better. Give me a nice skip. Yeah, that, that's where you want to be because you have a nice clean shot, don't have the hill in your way. And from there, it'll probably only be like a 250 foot approach shot. Okay, so the hill's not in, in my way as much as I was thinking it was going to be, but still got to keep it in mind. I'm going to go with the forehand with the yellow one. Just try and give it some height, hit it hard. Just try not to floof it and have it fade off into that tree line. I don't want to go backhand just because I don't want to bring into play at all if I don't have to. And my footing's not very good. And running up uphill, I'm more likely to pull it. So I'd rather just take try the forehand and see what happens. I think that's, I don't know, nah, it's not going to be far enough, but that should be at least like a 
45 foot putt, which as you can tell, it's on an elevated basket on top of a hill. So it's gonna play more like a 70 footer, but still a putt. Get it the height, get it there, get this putt. Oh, that was so early on my hand. Dang it, I hate those putts. All right, guys, we're on hole nine. This one's a par three, 315 feet, just dead straight ahead. This one's pretty easy, because not only is it wide open, just straight ahead, but as you can kind of tell, the uh, hill that's around the basket kind of makes a little bowl. So unless you're throwing it like super far past the basket or super far either side of the basket, your discs are gonna kind of collect near the basket. So for this hole, I'm gonna throw all the discs that I brought, just because not only is this a fun hole, and I wanna try and get an ace on this one, but also, I feel like this is a good one just to show off the uh, similarities and the differences between all these discs. I'm going to use the yellow one as my main one, and then I'll probably just go from there and stability, starting from the Thunderbird, going down to the uh, C -line, S line CD one. But let's see if we can get a first throw ace. Nah, pulled it just a little bit. It'll be parked though. You see that hill just kind of keeps everything there. That thing definitely does go a little bit farther than I give it credit for, because that's probably 20 to 25 feet past. So I threw that about 340. Yeah, you can see the Thunderbird doesn't quite have the glide that that other one has. Now let's see what the C-Line CD1 does. This one I'm gonna throw a little bit straighter at the basket. Or not. Oh, either way, you kind of get. I would definitely say the arc's right in between that Thunderbird and the CD1. Uh, so we'll go with T1 just straight at it this time. Actually, I promise. There we go. Ah. Hmm. The form felt a little weird on that one, so I don't know if I accidentally released that on a little bit of Anheuser or if I actually threw it flat for once and didn't throw it on some Heiser. Who knows? It definitely does show you that that T1 has some stability to it, but it just doesn't quite have that overstability the yellow one has. All right. Last one, S-Line CD1. I'm going to put this on some Heiser straight at the basket. You left. Come on. Come on. Ah, dang. Almost. So that was actually really cool to see how those discs compared to each other because none of the discs were really in this, had the same stability, but they were all evenly spaced when it came to stability because, like, the Thunderbird was just a little bit more overstable than the Arc. And the Arc was just a little bit more overstable than the C-Lines, uh, S-Line CD, or C-Line CD1. And then same thing for the uh, Teal Arc and the S-Line CD1. So... I guess good job for me for picking up those discs. I, apparently I did a really good job. <laughs> there you go. Oh. All right, guys, that finished up around out here with the arcs. I got to say, I'm really happy with how these turned out. I got a little worried when people com were comparing them to the Thunderbirds because I'm not a big fan of th most Thunderbirds. The star one that I have is my favorite one that I've ever found, just because it's not quite as stable as a lot of other ones. It's going to give you that glide while still having that reliable over stability. And these do that same thing. Not really this one. This one's a little too understable, but especially this yellow one just has that nice glidey push without having any turn, really, unless I'm thrown into a headwind or something like that. But it's going to give me that nice glidey push and then just a nice gentle fade. It's not going to give me some turn unless I put it on Anheuser I, unless I purposely give it that angle and so it's really it's really nice to have a disc like this where I can do that and to have another one that's kind of like a beat-in version of this one another thing that I'm really looking forward to with these and just some in general stuff with Goliath is they're actually they've actually just released their designs for their uh, 2024 tour series lineup and all those discs are going to be released in their glow oasis plastic which if you've watched my slingshot video you would know that that plastic makes them noticeably more overstable. 
So being able to get these in that plastic is going to be sick because then I can have that reliable, overstable Thunderbird kind of flight. Have this one that's a straighter one, more comparable to that CD1 kind of. And then I can have this one that's going to be kind of my like hyzer flip to flat or just like flat to turnover shots. So it's, it's really cool to see how Goliath's starting to just broaden out their uh, lineup and making it to where we can actually have an, our bags full of Goliath molds and not really have a missing shot or a missing disc in our entire bags. But a big thank you to Josh from Goliath for sending me these out to do this review. Uh, I don't know when these are going to be released, when the first ones are going to come out, but uh, I'll definitely make sure to put a post out about it. But if you want to check out any of the rest of Goliath molds until then, I've got the link down in my description. So please go check them out. If you use my code BenHoward10, they'll get you 10% off your order. So please go check them out. Please go support them. But thank you all so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and y'all have a good one.